Based on that introduction, it won't surprise you that this is where I work. This, this is a, a mountain in eastern Oregon. But unfortunately, a lot of mountain eco ecosystems in this region are starting to look more like this. Due largely to human impacts like climate change and habitat destruction, species around the world are being forced to respond to rapidly changing environmental conditions. So in the field of ecology, there's a pressing need for us to understand and try to predict how species are going to respond to these changes. So I study the effects of environmental change on whitebark pine, which is a high elevation pine tree found in Western North America. It's one of the few tree species that can grow at these high elevations, so it plays a number of important roles in the ecosystem. Everything from regulating snowmelt to providing food and habitat for organisms like birds and rodents and even grizzly bears. Unfortunately, whitebark pine is facing a number of threats. Like many montane species, it's expected to be affected by climate change, but it also faces several unique threats. The first of these is the mountain pine beetle. This beetle is a native species, but it's typically found at lower elevations. However, with warming climates, it's been able to move up into high elevations where it can attack the whitebark pine and wipe out entire stands of trees. The second is white pine blister rust, which is an invasive fungus. And in some regions, including where I work, it infects most of the adult trees in these populations. And finally, there's fire suppression. Now, we often think of fire as a negative thing, especially in light of the recent California fires, but fire is actually a natural and very healthy part of these ecosystems. So without fire suppression, we would expect fairly frequent low-intensity fires, which would clear out a lot of the dead trees and underbrush and actually help prevent the massive and destructive fires that we've seen in recent years. And whitebark pine relies on these fires because it's not a shade-tolerant species. So without fires regularly clearing out the trees, it's likely to be outcompeted by more shade-tolerant species like subalpine fir. <coughs> an important part of whitebark pine populations is there's a lot of environmental variation over fairly short distances, from the dry, cold, and windy conditions at the tops of the mountains down to the wetter and warmer conditions at lower elevations, where whitebark pine also faces stronger competition from other tree species. And what's interesting about the threats facing whitebark pine is they're expected to have a stronger effect at the lower elevations. So over time, we expect that these populations are going to be squeezed from the bottom, resulting in populations that are not only smaller, but also have a shorter elevation range. So the conditions at the high elevations are going to be more similar to the conditions at the bottom of the range. So in my work, I'm trying to understand the importance of this en environmental variation for the whitebark pine and how that will inform our predictions of how whitebark will respond to the threats that it faces. So to do this, I visited five different sites in the Elkhorn Mountain Range in northeastern Oregon. And because I was interested in the effects of elevation, I basically spent most of my time walking straight up and down these mountains, collecting data on the trees from across the full elevation range of the populations. And from each tree, I first collected tree cores to look at the annual growth ranks, which gave me data on the growth and survival of these trees. I then collected data on reproduction. Now, whitebark pine keeps all of its reproductive branches at the very tops of the trees, which is very convenient for the birds that eat the seeds. But for me, that meant I had to climb the trees in order to collect these data. I'm probably only about five meters up in the tree at that point, but I can tell you when you're looking down the mountain, that feels like thousands of feet in the air. <laughs> So once I had these data, it allowed me to test for the effects of elevation on the individual trees. I then used population models to scale up from these individual level effects to population level <laughs> effects. And to isolate the effects of the variation, I compared predictions of models that assumed that every tree in the population experienced the same average conditions to models that accounted for the spatial variation due to elevation differences. And what I found was that the variation had a positive effect on whitebark pine populations. So this suggests that if these populations are squeezed from the bottom in the way we expect, they are likely to face an additional cost due to the loss of variation. So they're likely to decline faster than we would otherwise predict. This could then have cascading effects on all of the organisms that rely on whitebark pine. And so we could see declines in many of these species that make these mountain ecosystems what they are. Thank you.